Uh, I'm from Jerusalem. Con. Oh my. Hello, God. Leon. Hello. The Ellison. <laughs> Hello. No need a speaker. We'll all do the is. talking right through. The time we walk in, and, and, and Patricia, Patricia finds you as well. Yep. Hello, Patricia. And there's John Brandon. Hello, Monica. Hi, I wanted to say hello the other night. Thank you. The other day when you were talking, I was muted. Thank you, Monica. Mills on fire. Good. If I can just mention something, I think all the ladies who have been married should put their maiden names on also. Well, that'd be ridiculous. That's the, that's the secret. That's all the secrets we got left. <laughs> and listen, wherever you go, you can recognize the voice. <laughs> Colin, it's Mark Schwartz. Very nice to see you. Every Mark week. Well done, you. Mark. Well done. Come and the other to... brothers, we need a full screen from you. I know this one. They've been watching on, on YouTube. Okay. Can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Yes, Hello, I can hear you. Hi. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Carol. Hello. It's familiar. Watch it. Aubrey, stop. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Malcolm. Hey, well, so I'm not in a minute on New Jersey. Which Malcolm? Who's that? I'm here. Angela Butler. Who's that? Got to make sure it's recording. Paul, are we recording? No, yeah, it is recording. Oh, does anybody remember me? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Yes, I'm I'm on there, but I don't know where to. Um, can I just mention something that hasn't been mentioned? Is Harold and Zena Miller that used to have the bridge? Uh, the bridge club. Nobody mentioned it. There were some Mrs. Cats that went there. And my mom went. Yeah. Okay. Most, okay, so most of the was, older good, crowd that was a good. That was a good introduction. So I'm going to mute everybody and we're going to stop. Everybody, um, when if you are the speaker, just make sure you unmute yourself. But before you speak, say your name that's on the screen so that I can make you the spotlight. Because uh, even though, you know, some people, their name on their screen is not their real name. So make sure you know what your name is on the screen so that I can make you the spotlight. So first of all, welcome everybody. It's been an amazing um, series. And I wanna thank all the speakers and all the people who have just been here and all the people who have watched the recordings from around the world. It's unbelievable to see how much love they came out of Musenberg. Just to give you an example, before I'd even put the video, or Paul actually, before Paul had put the video on online, meaning I hadn't advertised it to anybody, no one knew that the new series was online, 31 people had already watched it before I'd sent it to one person. So that just gives you an idea that there's a lot, a lot of love going around about Musenberg. I've spoken personally to people from around the world, all the way from Australia, New Zealand, to California, Vancouver, and everywhere in between. Um, so it's been wonderful to hear people's stories and it will continue. So that's first thing, a thank you. Second of all, um, it's not the end of reminiscing about Musenberg because I do intend on starting another series, not every week, but once a month. It's gonna be called Remember the special people in our lives series, something along those lines. And I would love people who wanna do more justice to particular people, either from Musenberg or just in your lives, but I would love it, especially if it's people from Musenberg, to just you know give some credit to your loved ones or maybe people who haven't been mentioned. There'll be two speakers per session, so 20 minutes each. And that's another way of reminiscing but that's more about the lessons learned about their lives and about particular people, not so much about your life, but about other people's lives. 
that you remember growing up who were special to you. So that's another way that we can reminisce, but it will be more focused on the life lessons of people. I've already got my first speaker who's got the most amazing, amazing story, um, and I will advertise that in the future. Um, I, we have, I'm giving everyone a chance to speak today or as much as possible. I have to leave at in an hour and a half. So that's how long this is going to be at a maximum. But the, I've got nine, actually eight speakers who have asked me to speak specifically that I'm going to start off with those, those people, each one limited to five minutes. And after that, I'm going to go to whoever wants to say anything. You can send messages to people who are here on the Zoom. You can send messages to people that maybe you've never seen, you haven't seen or you haven't heard of. And you can just say, if anyone remembers who this person is, please, you know, tell me who they are and send love. Whatever you want to do with that five minutes is fine, but we're keeping it to five minutes maximum. I'm going to start off with Marilyn Eid. I hope I got to say your name in the right way. So let me just see if Marilyn is here. Yep, I'm here. You. Okay, Marilyn. So I've made you the spotlight. Please, you know, just, I'm sure most people know you, so just go ahead. Okay. All right. At Marilyn Eid, my maiden name was Israelson. I live in Musenberg at present. I just want to quickly share something with you. This morning at eight o'clock, I went to Lentahir Hospital in Mitchell's Plain and had a vaccine, my COVID vaccination. I was in at eight. I was out at nine. It, I, I tell you, my faith in the country has, I can't believe how amazing it was. They were just so efficient. It was just fantastic. All right, now I want to start off about Musenberg. Um, I was born in Musenberg in 1951 in an upstairs flat in Clevedon Road. At one year old, my parents, Matthew and Lovell Israelson, built a house in the row. It was the first big house built in the row and had a magnificent big front lounge window looking out to the flay and the mountain. As the years went by, I grew up in Musenberg with wonderful friends and forever memories of an incredibly happy free childhood. My first friend was Annette Davis. We were born a week apart and our parents were very good friends. They lived around the corner in Yarmouth Road. My next, next door neighbors were the Berg houses and Jennifer and I were in one another's house all day long. Down the road was Liz Kay, Marilyn Rosenberg, the Marcus brothers and my cousins, the Melmids, Ian Rodney and Jeffrey, just to name a few. I had my bat mitzvah in Musenberg Shul and the celebration lunch in the Herzl Hall with Beverly Tobacken, Miriam Marin, Reva Price, Annette Davis, and the late Charlotte Katzoff. As teenagers, we all went to the Herzl Hall socials and hung out at the snake pit. As the years went by, I met my sweetheart at Surfers Corner and left home at 18 and married. My husband was not a Jewish guy and my parents who were very orthodox, remained unforgiving for years. We left Musenberg and had a wonderful life full of adventures. We even spent 1983 on Aliyah, but that did not work out. We had three children, Joanne who lives in Israel, married with two kids living on Kibbutz Naan, Natalie married in London, also to a Jewish man, and they have two children. My son Jesse also now lives in Takai with a new granddaughter for me to indulge all the time. My husband and I often came back to Musenberg to the beach on weekends, and we always said we wanted to come back and live here. But in 2009, he passed away from cancer at only 61. After rattling around in my house in Milnerton, I sold the place and shared a flat in Cinnabar with a Musenberg junior school friend and decided to follow my heart and stay in Musies. I bought a place with the help of my son in Milner Road near Full Space Station and have been living happily in my own shuttle by the sea. For all of you with happy memories of Musenberg, it does not have to be a memory. It can be a vision and come true. This place is magic. Early morning walks and swimming in the sea and lovely sunrises in this little gem of a place where your hearts are and you will always be happy. Okay, that's me. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn, so much. Mazel tov on your new brand. Uh, is it a granddaughter or grandson? A granddaughter, yeah. Granddaughter. 
<laughs> Mazel Tov, and uh, I'd love to meet you. We will at some point if you are here, and I couldn't have said it better. Welcome everyone back to Musenberg. We want to see you, however facility that is. Thank you very much. Next, okay. I'm going to go for. Next, I'm going to go for is Patricia Fine. Patricia, are you there? And after Patricia, I'm going to go to um, Monica Jacobson. Patricia, are you there? I'm not sure. Patricia, would you like to speak? I'm not sure. Oh, okay, so I'm going to go to the next speaker. Monica, are you there? Ah, I did. Oh, there you are, Monica. Great. Go. Growing up in Musenberg was positively idyllic. So much so that I returned to a house built by my father 60 years after studying in Johannesburg and living in Pretoria. Such fulfilled lives. Poetry and music groups, abonin, girl guides, scouts, our beautiful shore, amazing walks along the beach, mountain climbing, swimming before school. Um, I was a madricha, but my parents wouldn't allow me to go to camp. Um, Imagine, imagine yeah. writing the trick with a tan. Our beautiful high school is now a police station. Uh, Such, can you hear me? Because I've got a sore yeah. throat. Okay. Yeah. Such fulfilled lives. Poetry and music groups. Abonin, girl guides, scouts, our beautiful shore, amazing walks along the beach mountain climbing and swimming before school. Acting was very much a part of what we did. And I'm very grateful to the Tama Terrible. I was a madricha of Habunin, but my parents would not allow me to go to, would not allow me to belong to camp groups. So I was quite humiliated when my, my Stillin's parents came to ask my parents to please let me go. Very humiliating. Such, such fulfilled lives. Music, poetry and music groups. Um, in summertime, the Lizard Club held dances at the Tama Tora Hall. Abat Mitzvahs, Bar Mitzvahs, plays were also held there to a Bertie Stern developed the Mask Theatre. All the people who joined with me in acting, I don't know if they're around, but I'd like to mention them. There was Sarah Sloman. Barbara Simon, who lived next door to where I now live, Charlotte Cohen, and um, I met my husband on Musenberg Beach while still at school. We were married in our unforgettable Musenberg show a few years later. Please excuse my voice. We continued to come to Musenberg every December holiday to visit my parents and even their after. During varsity holidays at the end of first year, I took the lead in Gaslight with Mark Cohen at Tom Terrible. What a thrill to receive flowers from my husband on the first night. A few years later, I watched my brother Alan in our town at the Mass Theatre, developed by Betty Stern. He really did a lot for me. During varsity holidays at the end of first year, I took the lead in gaslight. There were a lot of people involved. And what was amazing, of course, was Lyndall Cohen, Lyndall Kaplan's developing of Bobo's Wachos at 
During the varsity holidays, at the end of the first year, I took the lead in Gaslight with Mark Cope and Tom Terrible. What a thrill to receive flowers from Danny on first night. A few years later, I watched my brother Alan in our town at Mark's Theatre. So, here I am, staying across the road from my old home. And I'm not leaving till I go upstairs. Thank you, Monica. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. We love you in Musenberg. You know that. Thank you so much, Monica, for speaking and for working out Zoom and everything else like that. As they say in Shul, Yershev Goach to you. Okay, next person I'm going to say is Linda Pachter from Israel. And after Linda, we're going to try again. Patricia, fine. I don't know, Patricia, if you want to speak or not, but there'll be an opportunity. Other than that, if you don't want to, we'll go Linda Pachter and then uh, Stephanie Barry from Cornwall. Okay, so I'm going to go to Linda Pachter. As, as Rabbi Ryan said, I'm Linda Pachter, living in Efrat in Israel. For, originally from number 11, Yarmouth Road, Cricklewood. My brother Stanley and my sister Zanette Felkov, both of them living in Sydney, Australia. Our parents were Izzy and Ray Frank. I have four sons and our latest number 13th grandson was born just yesterday. Mazel tov. Thank you. My grandfather was Reverend Frank. He served in the Museum of Shul for 40 years. I'm getting a bit emotional, sorry. He passed away in 1965. Together with the leaders of the community, he was instrumental in maintaining a vibrant Jewish congregation with daily minyanim and Shabbat services that were well attended. I remember as a child having to sit on the steps at the, uh, uh, in the shul as there were no seats available during the Chagim. The highlight was obviously in the summer when all the Joburg visitors used to come down to Musenberg. He was also an excellent chauffeur blower. As people have mentioned before, my grandfather used to do headstands on the Musimic Beach every morning. He also had chest and hand expanders at home, and he had a chart of exercises that were taped up upon, on the wall at home. Um, my grandfather owned a few houses in Cromo Road. My husband, Hershey Pachter's family, once came on holiday to Musenberg from Camps Bay, and the oven didn't work. My grandfather told my mother-in-law, Maydala, you're on holiday, you don't need to bake now. We loved going to shul on Simchat Torah and getting flags and slabs of chocolates and then going back for more and more and more and more. And now for some memories. I remember my dad going down to the beach early on a Sunday morning to get a parking space and then walking home. So later we'll have the car to come home because otherwise it was impossible to find a place to park. On Saturday nights, we'd often go and watch home movies at the Salises in Richmond House across the road from Belmoral Beach. All the teenagers used to turn up for these movies. Uh, we loved going to the snake pit, having our photos taken, and afterwards we'd go to the Belmoral Beach to a little hut where all the photos were put up, and we'd choose what we wanted. I went to the Hebrew Nursery School in Windermere Road. Um, in fact, there's a photo of my group in the book Musenberg Shtetl by the Sea. I went to Musenberg Junior School and then to Wamba Girls High. And I used to come home by train every day and meet up with all my friends who attended Sam Susi or the boys who attended Wamba Boys High and Sex. I'd just like to mention some of the people with whom I was friendly with. Um, I haven't heard from a lot of these for many years. Gail Blackman, Debbie Shapiro, Gillian Edelstein, Brenda Bloch, Peter Friedman, Diane Zacks, Karen Zlotnik, the Schwartz Boys, and many others. And of course, Pearl Salas, who's now Pearl Gishan, who I'm still very friendly with and in constant contact with. My brother remembers catching tadpoles in the stream opposite the shul. He also remembers playing rugby, he said only once, on the bowling green. I joined B'nai Kiva at an early age and we had our meetings at the Herzl Hall. It was there that I also attended Cheder or Hebrew lessons most afternoons until my trick, matric year. We had a great childhood in Musenberg, playing in the street and playing cricket also. Yarmouth Road was full of Jewish families. The year before we made Aliyah, my husband, Hershey Pachter, laned at the Museum of Shul every Shabbat and led the Musaf services. I really look forward to visiting Museum of one day after not being there for 25 years. In fact, we'd planned a trip last year, but due to COVID, had to cancel. That's it. Thank you very, very much, Linda. 
and uh, thanks all the way from Israel. And in particular, I don't know if you saw the Musenberg Magilla newsletter, but I dedicated the obituary section to your grandfather. I saw so, that. I saw that. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Um, next, Stephanie Barry from Cornwall. Just uh, unmute yeah. yourself. There we go. Yeah, hi. Actually, you know, I live in Penzance, and I want to say it's Paro to Penzance because I grew up in the northern suburbs of Cape Town. It's been many okay. Days in Musenberg and Stephanie Berry is a shortened form of Berelevant, Stephanie Berelevant. Uh -huh. So I'll, I'll be very brief today because I was, had the misfortune not to grow up in Musenberg, but I just want to really pay tribute to some very special people, two of whom have passed away in the last few years who I know would have so loved these webinars. And the first person is uh, Rosemary Levine, who is from Zimbabwe who a very, very courageous lady who overcame many, many challenges in life and lived the last few years in her life in Cinnabar, many years of, um, in Cinnabar and um, passed away sadly at the end of 2017, excuse me, 2017. And the other one who I had more recent contact with is um, Sylvia Goldberg, who was mentioned last week briefly and who passed away at the beginning of 2019, very sadly. Um, I was living in Cinnabar for the whole of 2018. Um, I'd been in Cape Town quite a few years caring for an aging mom and so the year that I was sorting out her affairs, I, I lived there and that's where I met Sylvia. And um, I think she would have just loved every minute of these webinars. And I have to say, she was a, a raconteur extraordinaire. I mean, she could tell a story about Musenberg, about anywhere, which just had you riveted. So I thought, so as a tribute to her, I tried, I can't quite remember all, you know, it's a very short story, this one, but I just, it just stays with me. I'm not sure if I've got the ending correct, but maybe there's somebody here today who can correct me, because maybe it's one of those legendary, you know, one of those stories everybody knows. So Sylvia Goldberg um, is walking along, I think they're going past those booms, is it False Bay, just the station before Musenberg, they're walking along the booms, and I think it's either with her children or some young kids, and obviously the one kid's like moving along, and he's kind of kind of gliding along uh, next to the beam or touching it, and whatever he's doing, as kids do, sort of, you know, uh, kind of hang on to a railing and wearing a kind of I think a raglan sweater and the next minute obviously a little kid um, something in the sweater got hooked in the boom and the next minute um, the train had passed and up went the boom and up went the kid like right to the top of the boom and I mean the way she told it was you think well I have to say to you, it just was the most extraordinary thing to think they're all standing there. They were a little bit nervous, but it's, it's you know, very funny. Um, <laughs> it's up top there, how's it gonna get down? So now I have to say to all of you, I hate to tell you, this was a, a Friday night dinner a couple of years ago, and I can't quite remember, but maybe somebody here knows, did that child oh. fly down the boom or did they have to wait for the next train to come, for the boom to come down? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, um, I just like to say, <laughs> I guess we're all either waiting for our train to either come into the station or leave the station or another train to go elsewhere. But before I end off, I just want to say also two other very special people who I can see today are listening, who also were a very big part of my life in 2018 and when I was back for a bit in 2019, and that's Abe Gordon and Shirley Rabin. And I think together with Sylvia, they were like all my <laughs> kind of my surrogate parents, aunts and uncles, and just have very, very fond memories of them and the very special time I had there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie, from Cornwall, or not near Cornwall at least. Cornwall. Thank you very much. It is Cornwall. <laughs> I, I don't know the yeah. answer to that question of the kid, but it is an interesting <laughs> dilemma. Um, next, I'm going to go to the other side of the world which is Raymond Seba from Oceanside, California. Let's see if you are here, Raymond. Yes, hello, yes, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Great. Um, I'm gonna add you as the spotlight, go for it. Yeah, okay, hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm not from Musenberg. I grew up for born in Claremont, Friedhoek, Renzo, Camps Bay, now live in Oceanside, California. Uh, I, as I say, was not from Musenberg, but got to know many of the Musenberg crowd. Uh, 
what happened was that family called the Singers, who you guys might remember, moved from uh, Musenberg to Aranjezucht. Uh, and the ones that were my age group in particular, Zolly Singer and his sister Eva, uh, it, they, the crowd in Aranjezucht, where I lived at the moment, at that time, uh, we then became friendly with the Musenberg crowd. So immediately there was a now contact between Aranjezuch and uh, Musenberg. But my memories of Musenberg go from a child to an adult. I'll, I'll go backwards. The last co contact I would have had with Musenberg, my family, we had a plating business in Cape Town. And what we used to every year, most of the schools in Cape Town, Gardens, Marie Road, Friedrich, and Musenberg, we used to uh, attend to the shul silver from the Torahs, the breastplates, the crowns, the yadim, and repair and polish before Rosh Hashanah. Now, I remember the silver at Musenberg shul pretty well because it was in good condition. It never needed repair much. All the other silver from the other shoes that needed bells to be replaced and various other dents to be removed. But the Musenberg uh, silver was always in very good condition and just virtually needed cleaning and buffing. But uh, I don't know which year it was. I don't remember. It might have been 1993 when the shoe was broken into and all that silver was stolen. Uh, Maybe somebody here will remember which year that actually was. So this was my dealings with uh, Musenberg as an adult. We go back to childhood. Uh, well, when kids used to drive over every drive every Sunday afternoon in the summertime to go swim, and uh, then of course as you go older, you reach the stage where you want to go to the snake pit. And uh, snake pits at the time sort of getting interested in drills, etc. But the snake pit, we f I found, and a friend of mine in particular, we found a problem that if you had some sunscreen, the moment you produced a sunscreen, uh, you'd be inundated with almost a swarm of bees. Can I have some? Can I have some? So we got so fed up with this, we decided one day to bring a tube of toothpaste instead. Open the tube of toothpaste. And everybody came around, can we have some? So of course we gave them some toothpaste. But if they ever realized it was Colgate of some sort, and uh, everybody started smearing toothpaste on themselves. But the next week, we got even bolder, and we bought some, if you remember, green colinos. <laughs> People sort of came, wanted some toothpaste, so we gave them some of this green colinos, so we spread the colinos on them very very, very, very keen to, to do so, not realizing this is probably not toothpaste. And the other thing was, if you had any food, then all your friends would be around, they can I have some, can I have some? Um, so you got a bit fed up with this. One day we went across the road and bought some pickled onions, sat on the beach and on the snake pit and ate pickled onions. And of course, nobody really wanted any pickled onions. Uh, and one other thing we did on the beach, and uh, uh, Rabbi, uh, I'm asking your forgiveness for this. We would put the towels around our heads and pretend to be Kuanim doing the Duchen service. Okay. <laughs> and we, you know, the ay, 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 ay part of it, and the Gentiles wouldn't know what was going on. Uh, and we, I think half the Jewish people there didn't know much either, but the other half certainly did. And said, How can you do this? How can you do this? Um, then what happened a few years later, well, uh, but in particular, the friends that I made were guys who've spoken to before, uh, Leonard Weinreich, Henry Brown, Roger Tobacken, made Boris Lewinstein, and we used to have parties together, they'd come around the outside of, of the peninsula, we'd go to theirs, but then I remember one uh, when Henry, when Leonard was, uh, before he got married, now wife for many years, uh, Francis was going to have a party, and it was a 1920s party, and we all had to dress up 1920s. Now, I think it was Jerry Jacobson, if anybody remembers him, came to the party dressed in a 1920s bathing costume. And uh, it was suggested that 
somebody wears their bathing costume. The next is a Saturday night party, of course, on the Sunday at Musenberg. There were no takers except myself. So I then walked onto the beach in this 1920s bathing costume, which for some reason, I think it was, remember that it was orange. This caused quite a stir on the beach. And um, I don't know if anybody here is old enough or the same age group as myself to remember that particular incident. Um, that is about my only memories of Musenberg that I can think of that I would like to tell you guys about. But they were great times and uh, nice to talk to you. And I heard I enjoyed seeing Leonard and Henry in person when they were here on the original first uh, program. Thanks all. Bye. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I know Oceanside very well, by the way. I live in San Diego for 10 years. So it's a place close to my heart as well. So thank you, Raymond, from across the world. Also very early for you. So thank you. Next, we're going to go to also an overseas person. She's spoken before very briefly, but now she's going to also talk a little bit more. Batya, where are you, Batya? Hi, I've unmuted, yes, I've unmuted myself. You can hear me? Yes. Um, I'm, I've got to squash this into, into five minutes. I'm going to talk quickly. Uh, and I've written it all out so that I remember everything. I am very privileged, more than some, to have been born in Musenberg, grew up in Musenberg, went to school in Musenberg, junior and high, matric class of 1961, married a Musenberg boy, Leslie Sherman, um, in the Musenberg Shul. We lived in Musenberg and sent our children to Musenberg Junior School, and we only left Musenberg 18 years after we were married because of the call of Herzli and a Jewish education. At one of the Musenberg school reunions, uh, the band leader asked if anyone could remember the school song. Mervyn Rosenberg and myself uh, put up our hands and were asked to sing the song. We are a very happy band and that's how it should be. We're all of us from Musenberg, the school beside the sea. I could go on because I remember all the words, but I won't because I remember that the band leader told me never to sing in public again. <laughs> Uh, John Brandon, who spoke last week, was it? He may have felt that we resented the visitors. I need to assure him that we loved them all. It was like being on holiday with them from November to March. Both Leslie and I lived on the other side of the bridge to those uh, mentioned many times previously. In fact, I lived in Wherry Road, uh, almost opposite the Tomatoro Hall, which was rebuilt into the Herzl Hall. I had my bat mitzvah, in the Herzl Hall with a group of girls of similar age. Rabbi Neufeld has a picture of the girls and I hope that he can show it to you. Um, yeah. the, the picture appears at the beginning of the, the movie for Shtetl by the Sea. Uh, we had the bat mitzvah, there we go. Oh, gorgeous, all the people that I loved. Uh, some of you are probably on Zoom now. Hey, Joan, you there? Um, we carried baskets of fruit on our shoulders. It was Shavuot and we sang. Salenu al kapenu, rasheinu aturim. Our Hebrew teacher was Moras Molensky and you will all remember her with fondness. I remember many of the old people from where we rode, William Sampson and my grandfather, Dover Dresnik. If I went to shul with him, I would sit next to him uh, very near the Iron Cordage, where he always, where he always uh, my grandpa and his, uh, and his brother Ari. One day I saw my grandfather and his, uh, his brother Ari, uh, Ari standing in front of the Iron Cordage and blessing everybody. I never knew what blessing of the Kohanim was, and I thought that they were the only people in the whole world that did this. I went to another shul office, and now in Israel, we hear it every time we go to shul. Others from where he wrote, uh, no, um, if uh, others from where we rode were Julius and Ray Shirk, whose daughter is married to Colin Shapira. Colin, you didn't mention that. And Julius's brother, Robbie and Solly. At the end of the road was Mrs. Loach's preschool, uh, which many of us attended. And just next to her were the Rosenbergs, Pam and Lynn. Lynn was a tap dancer. 
anybody remember her doing the Mexican hat dance? She performed it many times. I asked my, my sister who else she could remember from where he wrote, and there were too many for her to that she remembered. Except I wanted to remember Mr. and Mrs. Derman, who lived in Pelican Park at the end of our road. It overlooked the flay. They ran the grocery store in Palmer Road. Um, uh, Monica mentioned Habonim, and there's been much talk about Scott. I wrote here. She was the first one to mention Habonim um, uh, and the wonderful Bertie Stern. Very li little mention was made of Habonim. My sister and I, Rose, belong, belong to, uh, to Habonim. Um, our mother of him were Bur Bernie Singer and Pessy Kagan. Uh, Pessy is now novice. We learned many things, sang songs, spoke about Israel, and ended every meeting with a with the singing of Hatikva and a final Chazak Be'emats. My husband played badminton and table tennis, teaching kids in the Herzl Hall. On Saturday night, he and four Musenberg uh, friends of his would run dance sessions, hire a band. One of the bands was called The Idiots, who started with us and went on to fame. Uh, also hired a man with his sniffer dog who could smell if anyone was smoking dacha. Uh, they made some money from the dance sessions and donated it to the shul or to the police widows and orphans uh, fund. The police did tour of the Herzl Hall sometimes just to keep law and order. Can I squash in a little bit more? Trek fishermen bought in fish and my mother made uh, tasty sweet and sour harders. Ray Cohen, who regularly collected money that was in our blue boxes for the JNF. Colin Rosenberg's duck dive. It was a short, fast run along the sea edge, and then he'd slide into the waves, and that was called a duck dive, on his stomach into the waves. My brother Colin co uh, copied him at a young age. Very little mention has been made of Gerald Musicamp, who did much for the promotion of Musenberg. He and my husband could play beach bats for ages together. They were champions. His wife, Celia, was asked by Bertie Stern, to run the mass theater in his legacy, whatever, and she did for many years. Book, book, you haven't mentioned book, book. One person standing against the, I'm nearly finished Rabbi Newfield. Uh, one person standing against the bathing box, the rest bending down to form a line of bare backs. Then the guys would take it in turns to jump onto their backs. And just before they collapsed, someone would shout, book, book, stand safe. Who feel fungus up my life? My last paragraph. Lastly, that fresh air. My father would say that he drove into Musenberg tired and weary from a day in the city. As he took the bend before Full Space Station, he would wind down his window of the car and let the Musenberg air in and be completely refreshed. That's our Musenberg, the wonderful air, the beautiful sea, the wonderful beaches. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you, Bacha. You always got a lot of energy and, anybody you know, just, anybody I, who doesn't know who I am, I'm Brenda Resnick. I was uh, Brenda Resnick. Okay. Sorry, Brenda. Okay, so no. so wonderful coming from Israel. Thank you again. I'm going to go to people who wrote in the chat who want to speak. And then if anyone else wants to speak, you know, after all the people listed, you can either write in the chat or just unmute yourself. We're going to start off with Mark Schwartz and Farrell Hope after. So Mark Schwartz, I'm going to go to you. There you are and go for it. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to be speaking and very happy to listen to the, the, the Marilyn Israelson. I was at school with her sister, Denise, and of course, Linda Frank has said so much of the, of the things that I've missed out. My name is Mark Schwartz. My parents were Isaac and Bill Schwartz and we lived at Littleton, just above Musenberg Shul. Our family moved to Musenberg in about 1958-59 and we grew to be a family of nine brothers. And with our dear parents and our dear Uncle Bert, we all loved Musenberg. Thank you, Rabbi Ryan, for spearheading this wonderful program of reminiscences. It's been a sheer treat to listen to everyone and to you, a huge shkach and kola kavod. My first social experience was at the Gun Gullim Nursery School, which was across the flay. Our teacher was Ty Katz, who created a wonderful nurturing environment for us kids. It was there that my brother Stanley and I met a terrific bunch of friends. Some names that I remember, Gavin Jonas, Bernard Marcus, David Sack, Denise Israelson, Ingrid Garlic, Suzanne Gluckman, Cheryl Shapiro, Linda Frank, Debbie Shapiro, Pearl Salas, 
Jillian Edelstein, Stanley Cohen, Ian Miller, Alan Bottom, Laura Leverton, Tanya Gutter, Brenda Block, Herschel Price, and Jerome Adamstein, many of whom continued with us into sub eight Musimic Junior. From my nursery school days, I'm still in contact with Gavin Jonas and Debbie Shapiro, now Shane, and although not from nursery school, with David Sachs, my brother Justin's contemporary. Musimic Junior School is a serious place to come to from nursery school. School supplies and uniforms from Dankers, haircuts from Mr. Roy, Mr. Roy's on York Road, and a different atmosphere. Some teachers I can remember, Miss Rooney, Miss Prynne, Miss Hickman, and Mr. Bishop. W.W. King was our principal, a fine gentleman. Years after Musimic Junior School, during the Soretta riots of 1976, I volunteered to stand guard at Musimic Junior. I was paired with Harold Katzen, Myra Katzen's father. He stood with a .45 pistol and I had a .22 rifle. At, as dusk was falling, our houseman, Brian, came down the stairs alongside the school. He was on the way to Four Space Station and then on the way to his location. We waved at each other. A bit of a surreal experience to say the least. Him, the swat Khafar, and me, the white rifle toting white, and neither in reality comporting to our stereotypes. Within months, Stanley and I left South Africa for Israel. Two of my brothers, Robin and Justin, went through both Musimic Junior and high schools. Now, going back to Cheda. We attended Cheda after school at the Herzl Hall on Wherry Road. Our ever-suffering teachers were Rabbi Rabinovitz and afterwards Rabbi Avram Wiegler. After finishing our day at Musimic Junior, attending Cheda was our time to have fun and we must have driven our Cheda teachers bonkers. Um, Cubs, Stanley and I were also members of Second Musimic Jewish. We were introduced to Cubs by our Kayla Phyllis Oblivitz, Neil and Howard Oblivitz's mother. We learned about Scout Law and Baden Powell and greatly enjoyed our Cub Pack time. I never got to Scouts because Benau Kiva arrived on the scene. Colin Shapiro, whose sister Cheryl was my contemporary, spoke about Beta at the beginning of this series. I have no recollection of Beta in Musenberg, but I have very fond memories of their uncle who Colin mentioned, Maya Katz, who was our principal at Herzliya, oh. a, a great Jewish educator who was steeped in Hadar. We were introduced to vernacular by Madrichim Raymond Chazen and Myrna Silberwitz, a dedicated pair. I have this recollection of Raymond riding around Musenberg on a Vespa scooter, picking up kids one by one and taking them to the Herzl Hall for our meetings. Benak Kiva caught on with us and we enjoyed years of involvement and also going to annual Machanot at Hartenbos near Mossel Bay. A Musenberg shul, a few aspects that I remember. Going to shul for us kids was a treat. Mind you, not a davening experience, but a social experience. On a Friday night, we'd see our friends and we'd look up and see the girls upstairs. The same for Yiska. The highlight was going out of shore to play in the park with our friends and socializing. Today, a visit to Museum of Shul for a Friday night Kabbalah Shabbat is something I really look forward to. Let me end off with my imaginary visit to Musenberg. Last week, Lolita Aaron re related her long distance visit from Vancouver to Musenberg and that really resonated with me. In 1977, I was studying law at the Hebrew University on Mount Scopus in Jerusalem. When Hebrew seemed more like Greek, I would seek some refuge in the South African law reports in our library. It was not the content that caught my eye, but rather the editor, advocate Mike, Michael Barnett. Mike Barnett, who lived with his wife Hetty, Hetty above Sachs Butchery, was a gubber of the Musenberg Shul, always sitting regally in the box with his fellow Gaboyim, and in a flash, I transported myself from Mount Scopus to Musenberg and back to my own familiar territory. Mike was Anita's father and the grandfather of my cousins, Rosalia and Jack Stock. Fast forward 44 years. Today, all of my brothers and I live in close proximity of each other in New York, and our Musenberg days are always very fondly remembered. Thanks again, Rabbi Ryan, for this great forum for all of us to enjoy.
with love, Mark, well done. And I hope that you are a writer or something because you are talented at that. Okay, thank you very much. Next you, is going to be Farrell Ho. Farrell, let me look for you quickly before you start talking. There you are. Okay, you know, Farrell. Just unmute yourself. Uh, you just have to unmute yourself, yes. There we go. There you go. Okay. Uh, I really want to speak about someone who was very, very representative of a large section of Musenberg. There were a number of people there who were poor. And uh, they came over after the Second World, uh, First World War. And some of them came over to escape the Second World War. Uh, one of these people was Moisha Sevitz. Anyone who was in Musenberg during my time will remember Moisha. Uh, he made woodcuts. Uh, this woodcut here is of uh, Israeli children dancing. And here on the back is an email I sent, which I will read. And you can see his signature, M. Sevitz. I sent the following, uh, and I'll hold this up so you can look at it while I read it rather than the bags under my eyes. I'll hold this up and read you the email I sent to uh, the uh, Musenberg uh, exhibition that toured the world. Uh, to my disappointment, they didn't pick it up because I think they found it a little too downbeat. But I'd like to really remind you of Moshe Sevitz. Uh, in my home hangs a woodcut of Israeli children dancing the horror, photograph attached. The woodcut was made by Moshe Sevitz, a quiet bachelor who lived in Musenberg in South Africa during the 40s, 50s, and probably into the 60s. As a young man in Poland, I believe, he had woken in the middle of the night to soothe his ill infant son's cough. By mistake in the dark, he gave his son the rubbing liniment to drink and rubbed the cough syrup onto his chest. The child died of this, and Moshe could not forget himself. In the late 30s, he came to South Africa to make a new life and was going to send for his family once he established a job and a place to live. He did not get them over in time. Germany invaded, and his family went into the camps. When he found out after the war that his wife and daughters had been exterminated, Although it devastated him and he never remarried, it also relieved him of the personal guilt he had been carrying for the death of his son. And as he saw it, he had simply spared his son from a Nazi death camp where he would have died anyway. Anyone who lived in Musenberg at that time will remember this quiet man and the burden of grief he carried. They will also remember his lovely woodcuts and despite that grief, he produced these images of youth and hope. Understand his carving of Israel children dancing the horror was made in the very first years of Israel's existence. It is a tribute to both survival and rebirth. And I honor this carving as both a memorial to the Holocaust and the founding of Israel. Uh, I don't know how many of you remember him, but I just remember him sitting quietly in the corner of my grandparents' home on Cromer Road, not speaking, but just being there with the people. Uh, I also uh, wanted to comment to Monica Silberstein. This may be a surprise for her, but she became a relative when she married uh, Jacobson. My aunt, he was the nephew of my aunt uh, Hilda, her name was Sachs, before she married my, uh, my father's brother, Ben Hope. Uh, as I remember his 
uncle, Sonny Jacobson, was in uh, the Air Force, South African Air Force during World War II and never returned from a bombing raid on the plus the uh, uh, oil fields for what it's worth. Uh, Mervyn uh, and Barry, uh, Mervyn Rosenberg and Barry Blumenthal uh, were more than just friends to me, along with Barry Lockett and Ronnie Derman, they were bros. And uh, we still feel that way. Some uh, what, uh, 65 years later? Anyway, thank you very much. That's what I wanted to say. And I enjoyed uh, 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 Batya uh, Sherman's uh, review of the Musenberg of my time very much. Thank, thank you. you Farrell. Thank you, Farrell. What 65 years between friends, right? Thank you, yeah. Carol. I think you're in the USA, if I remember correctly. So thank you also again for coming. And also look in the chat. Someone was asking and saying maybe they're the granddaughter of the person you spoke about, but I'm not 100% sure. Just look in the chat over there. Likewise, Monica, you got some comments and uh, other people got comments as well. Just look in the chat there. Our next speaker is Neil Solipsky. We're going to go to Jenny Zinn after. Neil, let me find you. One moment. There you are. Okie dokie. Just unmute yourself. There we go. Hi, I'm Neil Zalupski. Um, and uh, I unfortunately didn't grow up in Musenberg. I've heard such wonderful memoirs, lots of reminiscing. Um, I did over years visit, have holidays, and my parents did live in Musenberg for a number of years. Um, but I moved here six years ago, and I, I just want to turn around. I, I didn't know how to do this, but I want to show you a picture which encapsulates. Can you see this picture? Okay, so that encapsulates uh, for me uh, exactly what Musenberg is. And um, I've heard so many wonderful memoirs, stories, reminiscing of the life here in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. And now that I've been here for a couple of years, um, I've begun to appreciate. But I also realized that, you know, almost every Jew in South Africa or ex-South African that you could meet anywhere in the world has either had some connection or once holidayed in Musenberg. And really, Musenberg is embedded in their hearts. Whenever we've met people, whenever we've traveled, and you say you're from Musenberg, you can be rest assured for the next half an hour, you're going to hear stories about the snake pit and about the Herzl Hall and many, many reminiscences. But I believe, you know, that uh, notwithstanding what was, we still have the best beach. We have amazing mountains. We have what is commonly known in Yiddish as the Luft. We have the village, St. James, Cork Bay, and of course, our beautiful shul. Um, our shul is almost 100 years old, and in fact, uh, recently, uh, we mentioned that for the first time in 96 years, services weren't held in the shul. Um, the mountains, the scenery, the beach, the sea, the surfing is still here. Yes, we're a smaller community from those days, but you know what, as the rabbi often points out, it's not just about numbers. The Ruach is strong and we're growing. After a long absence, we have a dynamic young rabbi on board. And these Zooms are proof. Uh, I know that there weren't Zooms for many years, but the fact that we're having these type of Zooms now is proof and yeshakayach to the rabbi. Um, Interesting enough, in December and January, we have 
a full shul. I mean full. Even last December, in difficult times and challenging times, and many of the old timers return year after year, now with children, grandchildren, and even great grandchildren. And they love it here. And when you ask them, why do they come back year after year? I mean, there's a whole world out there. Because Musenberg is special. Uh, one of the rabbis who gave a drosha even said it is a magical, special place, unparalleled to any other place. So why did I come here and what's happening in our community? Yes, as I mentioned, we're a small community, but we're growing. And we believe that there can and there will be a revival of this paradise, of this very special and beautiful place. Whether it's for holidays or whether it be permanently. And there are people, one of the people who spoke, uh, Gerald, has come back to Musenberg. So yes, there is a return. And uh, we are confident and we believe and led by our dynamic rabbi, he is going to be. And we welcome, we really have warm welcomes and extend uh, a welcome to everybody, whether you come on holiday to South Africa, whether you would consider coming back to live in this beautiful part of the world. And as you all uh, reminisce, it is, but the beauty is still here. And uh, we look forward to building this community, to growing it again, certainly not to the heydays of the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s, but I don't think that's important. The show continues. Mm -hmm. We have lots of, lots of good times. We have festivals. We have, we're planning Shabbatons, family reunions. We have bar mitzvahs. So mm -hmm. it carries on. And I think. Uh, that is uh, firstly uh, a lot of credit to, to many of the people who did hard work and kept the, the, the shul going and alive. Uh, Jean Tocker, Gerald, uh, Cecile, many of them who really held the fort over the years. And they were difficult years. People migrated, people moved to the Atlantic uh, seaboard. But I assure you, there's a lot of interest, things are happening, we've got lots of things planned, and we would love to see all of you back in Musenberg, as I say, whether on holiday or permanently. Uh, and you only have to make contact with either the rabbi or anybody involved, and we certainly will arrange and help you uh, and uh, welcome you back to uh, Eddie Davis, uh, who wrote the Shtetl on the Sea, they visit every year, they love it, they come back. Uh, Hedy is our best, uh, our best spokesman. Uh, she will tell you that uh, certainly the beach, even the wind, still here and just as beautiful and just as great. So uh, thank you, Rabbi Yeshekayach, for all you're doing for our community. And please, God, uh, we will see many of you visiting or coming back to live with us in Musenberg. Thank you. Here, here. Thank you, Neil. Here, here. Just, um, I'll, I'll just surprise you, just like tagging on Neil. Um, just today, I get an email, probably half an hour before this began. So the History Society of Musenberg, which is a non-Jewish organization, but some Jewish people are part of it as well. They want to donate or they want to put a plaque on the synagogue, which is going to say Musenberg Kalkbe Hebrew Community established 1916. It's the third plaque that they're putting up. The first one was a plaque to Agatha Christie. The second one is to Sir Herbert Baker. The third one is to our synagogue. And they've invited the uh, premier of the Western Cape, Alan Windy, to come and put that plaque up there. So just letting you know that that, you know, those are the types of things that are going on. In terms of the education that I'm giving to the kids in Musenberg, now the sea pointers have heard about it and they want me to come that side. So, you know, we're trying to spread the love going in all different directions, just catching up with a little bit of what's going on. Okay, um, and on that note, lastly, Neil, I hope you don't blush, 
But Neil, every week, delivers stuff to the people of our community in Musenberg, like Jewish reports, newspapers, as well as collects food from all of us, which go to poor people who can't afford Shabbat meals. So there's a lot of goodness coming from here. And Neil, you're a part of that. So thank you. Next, Jenny Zinn from Israel. And after that, Abe Gordon. I'm not sure if you want to speak, Abe, but there'll be an opportunity if you do. Jenny Zinn. Okay. Thank you, Rabbi. You know, it's wonderful to see so many ex-Musenbergers who are now in Israel because Musenberg was always a community that was very Zionistic. And many years ago, oh, it must have been a good 20 years ago, they actually had a reunion of ex-Musenbergers at a, I've forgotten which kibbutz it was, uh, here in Israel. I didn't grow up in Musenberg, but I've always had a very strong Kesha. My late grandfather, who was Isaac Stern, had the hotel, which is now the parking lot to the, uh, next to the station. And my late father, who was Alfred Stern, told me that this was during the flu epidemic, so it must have been just after World War I. And the near Tambid in the shul was donated in honor of my great-grandmother. Um, we lived in Marina de Gama for about eight years in the 80s, and on most summer mornings we'd go for a swim at the beach, where our corgi would do her best to clear the whole beach of seagulls, which flew just above her and laughed at her. And we and our friends would all congregate on the beach on wind-free Sundays, and there was always great competition as to who brought down the most sumptuous lunch. And of course we all shared. But I particularly remember with great fondness during those years that I was in Marina, Harold and Frieda Shapiro and their marvelous warmth and hospitality. Colin, I remember one afternoon driving back to the Marina um, on my way back from work and it was just past the booms and I saw your father walking home and I hooted at him to give him a lift home. And he thought that I was just some woman trying to pick him up and he studiously ignored me. Um, also, there was Dr. Mike, Mike Shapiro and his sense of humor. And he told a story of a patient, I'm not going to mention her name, but I think a lot of you might know her, um, who was prescribed a suppository and then complained that it was difficult to swallow. Other people who played a great part in my life were Alma and Emile Reese. Um, I remember Colin's parents with great fondness during those years, Harold and Frida Shapiro, and their marvelous warmth and hospitality. My late husband was Harold Zinn, and I'm sure that many here will remember him. Now he was a real Musenberger born in 1922 and schooled there mostly. He certainly lived the Musenberg life and he made most of the Snake Park and the Joburg girls who used to come down to visit in the summer. But uh, most of the stories he told me about Musenberg and they were merry, many, are not suitable for this audience. As a kid, he and his friends would run from Musenberg Shul at Simchat Torah to the Talmud Tower Hall and then to the shul near the Moral Hotel so that they could get sweets from all three. Much later, when his son Barry Zinn, who li was living here in Jerusalem, um, he brought his son, Luigi, back to Musenberg Shul so that they could boast of all three generations, that's Harold, um, Barry and Luigi, having had their mitzvahs in the Musenberg Shul. Harold much later insisted that his ashes be sprinkled in the sea at surface corner. And so that's what we did. Though of course, it is something that disturbs me now. And that's it. Those are my recollections of my love of Musenberg. Well, that's love from Jerusalem to Musenberg. Thank you very, very much, Jenny. And um, we're going to go now to Abe Gordon and Malcolm Navius after. And Malcolm, if you would like to speak. Um, so, Abe, I'm just going to look. You're under Paul, I believe. I think so. So, I'm going to add you as a spotlight. Go for it, Abe, just to make sure that Hi. you are. There we go. Great. Go. Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm quite excited, Ryan, because I'm over 80 and I'm finally appearing on televisions, number one. <laughs> um, so, the name's Abe Gordon, and in the 40s, I was brought up in a shtetl called Observatory in the Cape. 
with brothers Nathan, Charlie, Sam, and my sister Miriam. And all I want to say about the shtetl, which had about 30 families, and I suppose Hedy can confirm that one day, but um, we loved Musenberg. And every Sunday in the season, we packed into the car with the pickled cucumbers and chicken sandwiches and uh, looked forward to everything that Musenberg offered that all the speakers have spoken about, so I won't repeat that. One thing I, I don't understand is nobody's mentioned the tea room on the pavilion where I used to share tea with my mother and there used to be an orchestra playing in the background and a violinist. But anyway, just to mention that I want to be more specific about the 50s. And I made good friends with Henry Brown, Roger Tabak, and Frank Lazarus and Leonard Weinreich, the Benny Goodman of Musenberg. He's played a wonderful clarinet. And I remember jazz practices we try to put a band together practicing in Mount Road, Musenberg. And in fact, the late 50s, there was a jazz competition at the Pavilion. And guess what? We won first prize. We weren't that good, so I, don't I didn't understand at the time that the judge was my piano teacher, Charles Siegel, and that helped a bit. Talk about <clears throat> current times. I now live in Musenberg on the 11th floor and I have a wonderful perspective over the village, the sea and the mountains. And yes, I remember Gerald Saftel talking about the magic and the mysticism of, of Musenberg. And I absolutely agree with him. I've had enough time to sit on the balcony thinking about things and looking down. And I must say, there's um, an abundance of the elements um, here of nature. And also, it's all in balance. The sun is not too strong. The water is not too rough. The air is wonderful, as you all know. Maybe some people complain about the wind. But there is definitely a, a kind of a, a, what would you call it, a resonance of, of magic and, and divinity. And when I look down at the sea and I see these hundreds of uh, surfers, riding the waves, enjoying themselves, enjoying the freedom and celebrating life. I look down and I see all those, from my level, I see all those dots. And I wonder if those dots are not competition for the stripes on the, on the gown of Reverend Frank when he came down to Musenberg and swam through summer and winter because there are crowds of people here throughout the year. And particularly on the weekends, you cannot find a parking place half seven in the morning. So there is something very special about the place. And I want to conclude just by saying thank you to all the memories and the 250 families who taught us a very important lesson. Because right now the world is becoming new and there are lots of changes and there are a lot of negatives. But one thing we've learned from the 250 families is the loving and the caring and the compassion of a community and how important it is to fill our days that way. Thank you. Can, can, Thank you. Uh, can Shirley say something? This is, this is Abe playing the piano in Shirley's lounge. And um, Shirley's got a little bit to tell us as well about what's currently going on here in the place. Is that okay? Sure. So Shirley and then Malcolm and then Eddie Rabinowitz. Go for it. Hi, everyone. A kaleidoscope of images flash before my eyes. Spiritual, late Rabbi Mervis, thoughts, observations, life as life, chicken soup for the soul. Have just heard and listened to my neighbor, the impresario wonderful music and gatherings, Abe Gordon, Lester Brown, and many, many other gifted musicians of this. Miss Thursday Night Open House, movies with Robert Huberger, whom some know from Johannesburg, London, from Johannesburg from Johannesburg 
and part-time youth never knew how many would rock up for movies and supper. Smile to myself and say, all the way from Seapoint? From Seapoint? This because I'm usually greeted on that side of the world with, you live in Musenberg? Musenberg! You still drive. You drive yourself. When did you leave? And sometimes, to be otherwise, I say, don't worry, I left last night and slept halfway. When did you leave? Okay. Yeah, yesterday. Then comes Musenberg. Musenberg. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Musenberg. My Boba came from there. Haven't been there in years. Tell me, tell me, are the Nigerians still there? Yeah, um, yeah. we're like a good fruit salad, a very good mix. People and restaurants, actually 36 plus of the latter. Always looks like Tweede Never Yard with crowded beaches and surfers. But now everyone swims and surfs. Wonderful. It's technicolored now. Musenberg, the Golden of Medina. We are still here. Still here. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shirley. I showed some pictures of which of your drawing. Shirley's an artist. So I showed some of them. I will share more of them in the future on the newsletter. But thank you so much, Shirley, and always good to see you and A. Next we're going to is Malcolm Navius, who's been waiting patiently. Malcolm, let me just make sure that I can. Uh, there you are. Great. Can everybody hear me now? Yes. Good. Well, um, what I really wanted to say was that although I was never born in Musenberg, well, I've never lived in Musenberg my entire childhood, I was born there. Um, I was born there in 1944, delivered by my uncle, my great uncle, Dr. Barney Crickler. Um, but I spent most of my teenage years on vacation there. But my family started out very much earlier with my great-grandmother starting Crickler's Hotel in the middle of the 30s, which was taken over by my grandparents, Minnie and Louis Navius. Minnie was a sister to Sonia Seftel, who with her husband Louis ran the Mountain View Hotel. So my family history goes back many, many years. My grandparents left Musenberg, but returned in the early 40s, or sorry, late 40s or early 50s, and built Minlu Court on the corner of Alexander and Albertane Road, designed by her nephew, his nephew, her nephew, sorry, uh, Sidney Seftel, who was just out of university at that time. Unfortunately, he was murdered in Musenberg in the 90s. Um, this is where I spent all my, my holidays, my December holidays during my teen years. I still consider it more my, my hometown and have always felt very attached to it. Um, I was born at Dinesi, which is right next door to the Singer's um, house, Dr. Singer. Uh, he was a dentist, I believe. Um, so pictured here, are, is um, me with my nanny at Dinesi, uh, taken 75 years ago, 76 years ago. Then I you have look, a... Pardon? You look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> There's a picture of my mother on me. Oops. Anyhow, I have, I have a picture of my mother uh, with the bathing boxes at the back on Musenberg Beach, taken in the early 40s, and me with my cousin Aubrey Schneider, son of Oki and Morris, who was a true Musenberg boy, 
1947. And then my mother was modeling for Louis the hairdresser. And they had those pictures that flash up on the screen at the Empire Theater with that advertisement. Um, and Minnie and Louis on the occasion of their 50th wedding anniversary in 1965. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure which, which street it was. So Gerald, thank you for that. Um, I, I, that's all I have to say. I really still consider Musenberg my home. Uh, in fact, when I moved to New Jersey, I bought a house uh, really at the beach uh, in New Jersey uh, in a town very much like Musenberg. And uh, that is where I reside today. So, and I've been here for 42 years. So thank you very much for allowing me to speak. And I'm sorry I messed up those photographs. Uh, so Malcolm, first of all, thank you all the way from New Jersey. Second of all, if you want to send me those photos by email, I'll add them to the next Musenberg uh, Megillah. So if you would thank like you. to, I, I can get that in there. And thank you coming from all the way from New Jersey. Um, thank you very much. Let me see, Ellie, if I can find you. There you are. Okay. Add spotlights. Just to correct you, good evening, everyone. I'm in Perth, Australia, 11, 19 p.m. It's Eli. Eli, okay. And now, that's okay, Rabbi Ryan, you're doing a great job. And um, I'm a sea pointer. But my connection with Musburg is quite strong. And why is it such? Um, because... I was approached, well, I was in go to the Memories of Musenberg exhibition. And unfortunately, it ended in London. I said to me, well, why don't you bring it to Australia, which is where I live? And uh, I said, okay, we'll try and organize it. That particular exhibition had actually been produced by Dave Bloom in Israel. And so it made its way from Israel to London, to Melbourne, to Sydney, to Perth, to Sydney, to Toronto, to San Diego, and to Vancouver, that Memories of Musenberg exhibition, and thousands of people saw it. What worries me a bit, because I want to talk about the future very briefly, is that there's 64 participants on right now. Now, I know you've, you've had many more people on, but there are thousands and thousands and perhaps tens of thousands of people who have had connections with Musenberg. I'm a sea pointer. Every time I go back to South Africa, the last time was last year, I make sure I go to Musenberg. I walk along the walk, okay, to St. James. I come back, I have a swim. That's Musenberg. It's brilliant memories for a lot of people. So I implored all of you people, and you'll see why I'm saying this to you, to take your memories that you've so beautifully and articulately expressed to us, email them to me. You might not want to. But gentleman early on, Farrell. Okay, Farrell, I've got a message for you. Farrell Hope. Is a, there is a Farrell Hope in Perth, but it's not you. Farrell, you said you had something and you thought that Memories of Musenberg didn't want to include it. Now, you know that the that Joy Cropman was the curator and it was a team of people. I'm Eli Rabinowitz. I've, I run websites, 88 Kahila links for Jewish Gen. I'm on the board. I and I would invite you to send me your beautiful story and I will put it on the, the memories of Musenberg or the Musenberg Kahila link of which they, the one and the same so that your story that was very moving can be shared with everyone around the world. Because while uh, Zoom and webinars might be fantastic, they come and go. We wanna have things in history. Now, I've got together with a, a fantastic lady called Geraldine Auerbach, MBE, who live, lives in London, who's from Kimberley, who together with me have put together another website for Jewish Gen called Kimberley. And if you look at this website, and I actually earlier on I put the address, you will see people's stories very similar to your stories that you've told in the last five episodes. Those are our history, okay? But I know. Uh, after this, I'm actually attending a Zoom meeting in Israel. So what I'm, what I'm saying to everybody is that we all have stories. If you want to share your stories, I think this has been a fantastic um, um, situation that the rabbi has actually put together. It's brilliant. Okay. 
but it has to also be permanent. Facebook is not necessarily permanent. I'm also a researcher. People ask me to find people who died many, many years ago in a shtetl in Lithuania. I look after 35 Lithuanian shtetl or shtetlach. So Musenberg is the biggest of the shtetlach, as our friend calls it, shtetl by the sea, okay? So I think that Musenberg has got this potential of being a place that we all gravitate to in terms of memories, but also in terms of the future of our cultural heritage. Because remember, I'm a grandfather of five grandkids, three in Sydney, two in London. What a heritage, unless we have it in writing and we share it. It's not about heavy, serious stuff. You don't have to be a brilliant writer. You don't have to be like Leonard Weinreich, who's a, a brilliant entertainer. You just have to be somebody who has a story. Okay, so that is my message for today. Sounds like advertising, but it actually isn't. So the other initiative that I just want to finish off with is something that I'm getting together, well, I have got together, and it's happening very soon, with Geraldine Auerbach, MBE in London, with Gavin Morris, who is the head of the South African Jewish Museum in Cape Town, and with Adam Mendelssohn, who runs the, Cap the professor at the Kaplan Center at UCT. Can you see how it all gravitates towards Cape Town? What, we want, what we're doing is we're going to get people to share their stories. It's called Chol or C-H-O-L, Community History Online. So it doesn't matter even if you're just from Musenberg, you may have another shtetl. So it's all South African at this point that you want to share your stories with. So check me out, send me an email, ask me more about it. I'm, I'm blatantly saying you need to do it. I'm advertising because this is our heritage. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eli, uh, from Australia and Perth. Thank you. Um, I, I do have your email, I believe, because you, you, we have been in touch a little bit. And I will include your, can I include your details or send me whatever details you would like to include when I send the recordings to my lists, I will include your details so that people can send you directly. Thank so you. that's, that's very, very much. Thank you very much for suggesting that. Guys, it has come to the end of the series. If I don't leave now, Musenberg's not going to have a rabbi. My wife's going <laughs> to... So I'm going to say thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all the speakers today. Um, and as I say, you know, there will be opportunities in the future to speak and hear people's stories more in a, uh, you know, a, a, a bigger way in terms of like 20 people, you know, 20 minutes at a time dedicated to particular people. So I want to say thank you all for being here and stay healthy. Um, I know some people who were on the call here who actually had COVID and all this type of stuff. So God bless you all with good health. Stay healthy. Please heal if you are sick and uh, hopefully see you in good health one day, either on Zoom or more, preferably in Musenberg. Thank you all for being here. God bless. You can now say hello to each other for the next few minutes. <laughs> I'm going to ask everyone to unmute. Uh, Eli, Eli. Yes. Who's this? Sorry. My cousin Solly. Yeah. How are you, Solly? Nice to see you. Can you talk to anyone? You know? Yeah, you can talk to anyone. Sorry that we're meeting in Musenberg. Oh, we are muted. Yeah. Because we normally meet, uh, we, we meet at the Garden Shul or in Sea Point. So this is like a first. Right. And talk about Sea Point. You come from <laughs> Musenberg? You stay in Musenberg. Big rival <laughs> Sea Point. Rabbi, oh, well. you're not allowed to go to, to Sea Point. Are they, <laughs> they, they are big rivals. In in <laughs> our days, the people came to Musenberg and Sea Point. And Sea Point was even in competition. Swim. You couldn't yeah. even swim well, in well, Sea Point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I was just about to hit send on this yeah. private message to. Uh, I, which will oh, no longer be private as I read it. Please send me your email to rr.com. Write to you with your request to the info for some hands on research in Lithuania and an article I published. I didn't think I did, but I was going to have to find. Can I put this on your phone charger then? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna
Oh, well, just us. Please, but please get away from me. Do you want this? Sir? Bye, everyone. Stay well. Bye, Alison. Bye, Bye Colin. Be safe uh, and well, everyone. All right. Hi, uh, this is Alan Silberstein. Um, I have very warm and intimate memories of my association with Musenberg. It actually started, my family's involvement with Musenberg started in 1943 when my parents moved to Musenberg. My father loved music, fell in love with Musenberg. Uh, he loved the, the, the Musenberg Sea and he loved swimming in the sea. Um, my mother was actually, my parents had actually lived in Paro beforehand and my sister Monica was actually born in Paro and my mother had a close circle of close friends in Paro and she wasn't very keen to leave Paro for that reason but as uh, soon after she came to Musenberg she created a new circle of close friends and got very involved in all the various um, Musenberg Jewish communal activities. Uh, Gerald Seftel mentioned his family's involvement with the Mountain View Hotel and it's interesting that when my family first moved to Musenberg in 1943, this was two years before I was born, their first introduction to Musenberg was actually the Mountain View Hotel. So uh, there, there, there is a bit of a connection between my family and the Seftals who ran the, the, um, the Mountain View Hotel. Um, one of my saddest and most tragic memories of Musenberg involved a kid by the name of Bencion, I think his surname was Soriano, who was electrocuted. He was playing with some wires um, in front of the Musenberg um, boathouse, you know, where the scouts held all their meetings and one of the wires obviously was live and he electrocuted himself and I can still remember coming home from probably the Empire movie house afternoon matinee show and seeing his body covered by a coat of some sort. I, I had actually known Ben Sion and, and had actually visited him in his home. He, he actually lived, <coughs> I remember, in Clifton Road in the area between um, Dover and Scarborough Roads and I remember visiting him. I remember he had an older brother, Leon, and his mother had died and I believe he had a, a stepmother. Afterwards, the family, for reasons which I can understand, moved out of Musenberg. Um, I can also remember my days in the Musenberg Shul Choir, which was run by um, Kanto Chazen Goldwasser. The choir leader was Benny Galansky. And I, I can also remember what Mervyn spoke about, Mrs. Goldwasser always giving us. I, I remember the Oros drinks that she gave us. I don't remember getting sponge cake or anything like that. But I do remember that there was a little hunchback by the name of Joffy. I think he was the only probably non-Musenberg member of the choir, but he had the most magnificent bass voice. I also remember Scotty Gerson, who had a beautiful voice, and how he would, um, would actually teach us all, all these Highland Scottish ditties, like I'll take the high road and you'll take the low road and I'll get to Scotland for ye. But me and my true love will never meet again in the bunny bunny banks of Loch Lomond. I also remember Chazen Goldwasser who used to hum or, or, or strum a tuning fork and he would say something like, um, hmm, noch einmal. And that means we'd have to do it once more. Um, the kids at the choir, I remember, were kids I grew up with, kids like 
Mervyn Rosenberg, is he? I do remember going to Mervyn Rosenberg's place after choir practice, and he had an uncle by the name of Barney Levy, uh, who spoke with a very guttural German accent, and I can remember him. He was a huge man with a very big pot belly, and I, I remember that he could drink down one cool drink in one shot. And the other thing that I remember about Uncle Barney was the fact that um, I remember seeing the movie at the time, The Student Prince, and the student prince girlfriend who was played i think by anne blythe her uncle who was the, the innkeeper spoke with the identical accent um that uncle identical german accent that uncle barney spoke as you know that's just something that comes to mind at the time i, I don't know if i've got time my wife is to just add one last reminisce um, I also re remember um, that when the um, sand, Sandown by Sea, there was a fire at the Sandown by Sea Hotel, and I remember one of the kids in our class, Peter Boyd White, told us that he had either rescued a cat or a child from the fire at the hotel, and my cousin Ronnie Derman told me that they had discovered a trapdoor in the ruin, ruins of the um, destroyed hotel. So we were uh, obviously very keen to explore this trapdoor. And I remember the next afternoon finding the trapdoor. I was keen to go down into the trapdoor. And I went down un underground. And the next minute, Ronnie closed the door on me. And the, the only th closed the trapdoor on me. And the only thing that I could think of then was to get out of the trapdoor uh, and never mind exploring the um, the where the trapdoor led to. So, so so that was the end uh, end of my exploration. But interestingly enough, many years later, I joined the Musenberg Historical Society, and I found out I ascertained that apparently the Dutch East India Company in those days had used the grounds of the Sandown on Sea, um, the, the grounds to store ammunition there. So just as well that I didn't ex continue with my exploration of the, of the, uh, of, of that trapdoor. Um, I'm probably exceeding my limits, so I'm, I'm just going to end off now, but if anyone would like to hear anything more, they, they're happy to contact me or email me and I'm happy to provide any information simply because I love Musenberg so much. Thank you.